We have the floor to the representative of Ghana. Mr. Chair, at the outset, I wish to extend sincere congratulations to you on your election as the chair of the third committee and to the members of your bureau. You can count on the full support and cooperation of my delegation. I also wish to express appreciation to the Secretary General for his insightful reports on this agenda item. Ghana aligns herself with the statement delivered by Zambia on behalf of the Africa Group and by the State of Palestine on behalf of the Group of 77 and China. We wish to make these remarks in our national capacity. Mr. Chairman, poverty eradication in all its forms and dimensions, including extreme poverty, remains an indispensable requirement for sustainable development. And yet it also represents one of the greatest global challenges. While social development is an important component of poverty eradication efforts, it is also a viable tool for the reduction of inequality and the creation of inclusive societies. For this reason, we welcome the emphasis placed by the Secretary General in his report on the linkages between the Copenhagen Declaration on Social Development and Program of Action of the World Summit for Social Development and the implementation of the SDGs. My delegation is also pleased that member states in their interventions during the SDG summit held last week pledged to take action to advance several targets in this area. Mr. Chairman, the government of Ghana has over the years prioritized the implementation of social development policies and programs that ensure a fair and inclusive society with equal opportunities for all. Ghana has over the years instituted a number of initiatives towards the eradication of extreme poverty and succeeded in significantly reducing the incidence of poverty from 18.2% to 8.2% while reducing poverty from 28.5% to 24.5% in a period of one decade. The implementation of social development programs in Ghana has been guided by the National Social Protection Policy, which outlines five main flagship in initiatives. They are the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty Program, the Ghana School Feeding Program, the National Health Insurance Scheme, the Labor Intensive Public Work Program, and the Education Capitation Grant. The LEAP program, which provides cash transfers to extreme poor households, has in recent years been expanded to cover over 407,000 beneficiary households, which translates over to over 1.7 million individuals. In recognition of the fact that the provision of cash and in-kind transfers alone, without the necessary skills for income generation, will not provide a sustained exit from poverty, the government of Ghana is also seeking to create livelihoods that are more sustainable and which make for inclusiveness and growth. Mr. Chairman, Ghana recognizes that SDG 3 is a major cornerstone of, the sustain of sustainable societies. Good health is a building block of any well-functioning society and indispensable for sustainable development. Successive governments in Ghana have demonstrated commitment to the Health for All movement with the adoption of the Ghana Primary Health Care Strategy in the late 1970s and early 1980s, the strengthening of the district health systems in the 1990s, the establishment of the National Health Insurance Scheme in 2003, and the subsequent introduction of the community-based health planning and services, CHIPS. Most recently, the government of Ghana has developed a roadmap to domesticate the global universal health goals. Despite these gains, challenges such as sustained financing threaten the progress and sustainability of the National Health Insurance Scheme, and as such, Ghana continues to explore alternative financing sources to ensure its sustainability. Mr. Chair, in keeping with SDG 4, the government of Ghana continued with the successful implementation of its free senior high school policy. The enrollment in 2018 was about 490,000, representing an increase of 36% over the 2017 enrollment. To meet increasing demand for secondary education, the government of Ghana introduced the double-track school calendar as a temporary measure in 400 schools to accommodate more students and ease congestion in schools. The system ensured that an estimated 181,000 students who would have otherwise been denied secondary education due to constraints with space were placed in schools. In conclusion, Mr. Chair, Ghana shares the view that investing in people is essential to the development of human capacity and the achievement of social development. I thank the ambassador from Ghana.